I would like to preface this entire tutorial by apologizing. When I initially made this, I was experimenting with a noise gate, and that didn't make the recording all too good. So this is actually a voiceover. It may not line up exactly with what's on screen timestamp-wise, but I will try my best. FRC Competition 2015. This year is an exciting year because this year the Robo Rio we got has two USB ports. I was particularly excited because of the prospect of using a USB mouse to track position. It took quite a while, but I finally figured it out. So this is a tutorial video I'm making to help anyone else who wants to do the same thing. So as you can see here, we have a basic robot project set up. We're going to need to have a couple libraries. I'm going to come over here to a window off screen and copy two libraries to my project. These files are called jinput.jar and lwjgl.jar. Normally you would have to add them to the build path. I already have it set up, but here's me doing it again anyway. So, we just want them in the build path there. Then we're going to be able to use them in our code. So let's start with some basic code. Alright, so just like magic, this code got typed up. Let me show you what it does. First of all, I created arrays for controllers and components. The controller list will be filled by controller environment dot get default environment dot get controllers. Then we iterate through that list. This is just for finding out what controllers are where. So it's going to print out the controllers names and what type they are. Then, for each of those, it's going to get its list of components. A component is a button or axis on a controller. It works for mice, joysticks, actual controllers, and even USB keyboards, in which every button is a component. However, in this example, I have only a wireless mouse hooked up to the Robo Rio. Anyway, this goes through the list of components and prints their names. But we're not ready to run this yet. We require a certain library to exist in the Robo Rio, and we have to change the permissions on a particular file. So let's get to that. Okay, so we're going to want to secure file transfer protocol to the Robo Rio, which should be 10.first two digits of your team number, dot last two digits of your team number, dot 21. Default username will be admin, and the password is blank. Then go to user slash local slash lib and copy a file called libjinput-linuxarm.so. Then we're going to come back to the file system and navigate to etc. slash udev slash rules.d and open usb serial.rules as a text file. I already had another text editor open, so it popped up off screen. Sorry about that. Anyway, you're going to want to add the following. Kernel equals equals event asterisk. Name equals input forward slash percent k. Mode equals 666. Group equals input. And save that file. By the way, in case you're wondering what that rule is for, whenever a USB device of any kind talks to the computer, it buffers its data in a file on the computer so the device can communicate real-time and the software can get to it when it wants. On Linux systems, that file is usually protected to prevent programs such as keyloggers from functioning. However, that's not a concern on a robot, so we want full access to that file, and that's what mode equals 666 does. So that's all we have to do here, we have one more stop to make. In your home folder, you should have a directory called WPILIB. Go there and to java slash current slash ant, and we have three files we want to modify here. One of them is called build.properties. Again, I had a text editor off screen, so this popped up there too. Anyway, we're concerned with this line here. This is the top of the file. We're concerned with this here under Libraries to Use. First of all, we'll create a new line and type library, and this is just like set in a variable, so you could call library whatever you want it to. You could call it applesauce. Consistency is key. User.home is already pre-configured to be your home directory where WPILIB is stored, and here we're going to put in relative to your home directory the path that points to jinput.jar and lwjgl.jar we copied earlier. For me, this is in my home directory slash frc2015 workspace slash mouse example slash lib. I then want to create two additional variables, jinput.jar, and this is not a jar file, just the name of a variable, and I'm going to set this equal to library slash jinput.jar, and this is referencing the actual jar file, and I'll be doing the same thing for lwjgl.jar.
And then, on this line, you can see there are two lines that start with class path. One is commented out with an octothorpe. We want the non-commented out one and add a colon, dollar sign, jinput.jar, colon, dollar sign, lwjgl.jar. This class path is how the build script knows what other jar files to include when it compiles for the RoboRio. If you do not do this, it will only compile with the wpilib.jar and networktables.jar, which is important for your robot, but in order for the libraries we want, we need these extra two. So we'll save that and edit two more files also in the same directory that build.properties resides. We want to open robot command. Right here, right where the cursor is, before the dash jar, we want to add dash capital D lowercase java dot library dot path equals slash user slash local slash lib. If you are paying attention, this is the directory we put libj input dash linux arm dot so in on the RoboRio earlier. So let's copy this line and do the exact same thing with the robot debug command again, right before the dash jar, which seems to be missing. Where'd it go? Where'd I put it? Actually, I think I accidentally erased it while prepping for this tutorial. It can be added back, though. So just before this dash jar, we'll either retype or paste what we just did. Dash capital D lowercase java dot library dot path equals slash user slash local slash lib. This way, whether you're running the robot in regular or debug mode, it will know to look in this particular directory for the library it needs to run your code. Now this should be all, so let's try it out. To recap, this code should go through all the controllers and list their components. Okay, what you just saw was a Logitech USB receiver plugged into the RoboRio which accepts input from both a mouse and a keyboard, and this library treated it as two USB devices, one for each type. It found that controller Logitech USB receiver is of type mouse and its components in order are left, right, middle, side, extra, forward, back, unknown buttons, and more importantly an x-axis and a y-axis. Now of importance to note is different models may have different names or in different orders, so you'll want to run this code to get their order, or their names, so you can search for them when you want to use them. And now I'll write some code to actually get the values from the axes. Okay, so here's the code. I created three variables of type controller called mouse and two components called x-axis and y-axis. This will iterate through the controllers until it finds one of type mouse and set the mouse variable to that controller. If the mouse is not null, if one was found, then it will get its list of components and iterate through them, finding ones whose names are x and y and assigning them to their variables appropriately. If you'll recall, these were derived from the console out earlier. When, so long as x-axis and y-axis are both not null, so long as both were found, the mouse will be pulled. Now this is important. Pulling the controller gets whatever info is in that event file we made public with mode equals 666 earlier, and copies it to this program and resets that file. So we have to pull the mouse first. Then we want to get the pull data of both the x-axis and y-axis. And I've already started it. Here's the output. This is updating every half second per what I wrote in my code. I'm moving the mouse, and you can see the values pop up there. These are my delta x and delta y, or my change in them, not my absolute position. You'll want to integrate them, or add them up, to get the absolute position. And these are measured in pixels. Multiply this by your mouse's resolution to get the distance in inches. Also worth noting is the mouse's response rate. If the mouse updates the computer every 0.01 seconds, for example, you do not want to pull the mouse any quicker than that. If you do, you'll get meaningful data the first pull, but any subsequent pull will be zero until 0.01 seconds has elapsed, and the mouse has once again updated the computer. If you're integrating the delta x and delta y to get your position, this won't throw your calculations off any, but it's spending CPU cycles needlessly. Another thing to mention, remember editing the robot command and robot debug command files earlier? 
Those files will be pushed to the RoboRio each time you upload your code, so while you could have edited them on the RoboRio itself, it would have been overridden by the copy on your computer. Also, be wary when updating your FRC plugins in Eclipse. I've observed that the contents of the WPILIB directory are reset each time, so if you update your plugins, be prepared to re-edit those files. Finally, I had to patch and compile the libraries I'm using specifically for use with the ARM processor, which the RoboRio uses, so instead of having other people go through that, I will upload my altered files for download and use with the RoboRio, but I do not own them, and so cannot answer any questions you may have about them. They should be linked in the doobly-doo. Anyway, thanks for watching.